We need this river to work, we need the Murray to work, we need the whole system to work, but we need to try and find a balance or what, find ways to make the impact on fish less. Go back to basics, there's over 50 species of fish in our Murray-Darling system, but over half of those fish are threatened and all of them, all of the native fish have declined in abundance since uh, we started to use this river as a working river. So we made a whole bunch of changes which were necessary and uh, that's how we feed the nation but we're now recognising there's impacts to that. So one of my jobs is to try and work out how can we mitigate those risks or mitigate those impacts. And in particular today, we're talking about screening. All of our native fish lay eggs, and those eggs vary from half a millimetre or smaller to maybe a couple of millimetres big, so they're tiny. Once they hatch, pretty much all of those species of fish in the basin require some level of flow to make them drift downstream. Flowing rivers bring those drifting eggs and larvae into contact with your infrastructure, which is the problem that we're trying to address here. These drifting larvae, a couple of millimetres big, they don't swim great. They're not going to get out of the way. They go, up they go, done. And if they survive it, if they go into a dam somewhere, they're okay, but they're not coming back to contribute to the next generation. So what we're doing with these modern screens is we're actually changing the hydraulics of the intake of the screen. So we actually reduce the flow or the velocity of the water reaching the screens. If we get anything impinged on this surface, we have a problem. So it's quite important when we look at a screen that we actually um, have a screen that's cleaning. So you saw water cleaning before. The way this screen works is basically there's an impeller in here. As the water's being drawn through the pump, through the screen, the screen starts to rotate on its own. Yeah. The company that supplies the screens is River Screen. They're in um, USA. We've been importing them now for about six years, I believe. Um, we've probably got three or four hundred units working in, throughout the country. As everyone knows, in irrigation, once you start losing pressure, you're not watering properly. So that's why we went to this system. So there's a set of jets on the inside that blow up through the mesh to keep it clean and a set on the outside on the water drive ones just to rotate the screen and blow anything off the outside that sits there. I live on the Darling River. We need a healthy river, so we need the, the native fish if we can. But also it gives us benefits upstream in that the irrigation system and the filters along it uh, reduce use wear and it's a cleaner, cleaner system so it makes, makes our life easier on the farm. The time that we take to physically clean the, the backup filters and the filters through the, the drip irrigation system is, is reduced tenfold. And also the cost of, of, of doing that. The true reason, or number one reason we went with a fish screen and we like the idea of it is for our sustainability journey. Um, we've got a great relationship with Kay and the local land services team here. And then when the funding come up, we thought, it was a it was a no-brainer. So we we went with this design, probably more so from a, in our opinion, we like the lack of power, um, lack of maintenance, and it just seemed like a a really easy fit to our current design. We've got the rail system, the standard centrifugal pump up the top of the embankment, and really it's a a flange change and a bolt-on. Um, so beyond that sustainability benefit, we really wanted to look at also operational benefits, which we've all, all spoken about in detail being filtration. Currently we're back flushing 45, uh, every 45 minutes on our primary filtration and our field filters we're cleaning manually every month roughly. We know what our current state is and all of our pressure data, our back flushes is all trended so we can go back over that. And, and build some, um, some cost benefits out of that. So that's a key thing that we're really interested in understanding. And then what we see that doing is driving into our other sites. So we've got a lot of sites with similar infrastructure, similar pump rail systems where ideally, you know, it's ch change out our current screen, which is a standard 10 mil punch hole aperture arrangement with a, a screen like this, and, um, and then see the benefits across all of our sites. The funding assistance from local land services probably pushed me over the line to order, order the screens. And, and the fish screen has been a real positive. It's made my life easier. The river's um, better off, my farm's better off, and, and um, less worries and, and, and expenses 
of the farm. Without the screens, pumps can suck up millions of fish throughout the basin per year, depending on flow rates, depending on how good a year it's been. And this is a pretty simple way to keep a bit of distance between the fish drifting past and the actual pump, the offtake. It gets frustrating when you get rocks thrown at you for being an irrigator, just for being an irrigator, um, when all you're doing is your job feeding the nation. Um, so if this is one of the ways that government can help incentivise an improvement, and it gets you a bonus as well, through dollars and efficiencies and less resources, then that's a win-win. And the third win is, theoretically, if we get more fish staying in the river, we'll have more fish to go fishing for in the next 10 years, and our kids and our grandkids will continue to be able to fish recreationally for these guys. If this gets picked up and, and sort of starts getting laid out across the Murray-Darling Basin itself, that's one of the big threats to fish that we don't have to worry much about anymore.